Hello and welcome to your lesson on symbiotic relationships. This is something that hopefully you've learned in the past in previous science classes, but we're revisiting it here and maybe with the lens of understanding a little bit around niches and also around adaptations. Uh, and then un understanding that a lot of these relationships are actually uh, behavioral adaptations that these species have, which makes it quite interesting. So here's today's learning outcomes. The objective we have, the outcome, is to investigate and interpret diversity among species within species and describe how diversity contributes to species survival. And specifically what we're looking at here is symbiotic relationships. So if you are successful after today's lesson, the criteria would be that you can classify symbiotic relationships by identifying the links of animals in mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism, and also to be able to identify and provide examples of the following symbiotic relationships, and again, the same ones, of mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. So, you might be a little bit hazy on what these three mean, what they are, but we're gonna go over it again today. Now, first of all, a symbiotic relationship is not a predator-prey relationship. Most interactions between species involve food in some kind of way. So whether it's competing for the same food or being eaten or being the eater, right? In a predator-prey relationship, that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about symbiosis, okay? We're not talking about competition and we are not talking about predator-prey relationships. In symbiosis, it's a long-lasting relationship where both species survive for a long period of time. Okay, so predator-prey relationship doesn't fit into that because one species ends up dying immediately by being eaten. So that is where it does not fit in. So predator-prey relationship is kind of a separate thing that you need to be familiar with and know what that is, right? But it's a separate thing than symbiosis. So in predator-prey, you've got the predator, the thing that's doing the eating, and prey, the thing that's getting eaten. So if an interaction between two species lasts a long time and it is not a predator-prey relationship, it is called a symbiotic relationship. And symbiosis or symbiotic means living together. In symbiosis, at least one member of the pair benefits from the relationship. So one of the species involved in the symbiosis Benefits, because if one species, if both didn't benefit, there would be no point to it, right? The organisms would not keep up the relationship if there was not benefits to one of the species involved. It would not be advantageous. Symbiosis is a relationship between two species living in close proximity that lasts over time. Now, mutualism is a relationship in which both species benefit. So both things end up being better off by having this symbiotic relationship. So we call that mutual, right? Both mutualism. In commensalism, one benefits and the other just like doesn't care. It's not a disadvantage or an advantage. It's just like they're unaffected. So one thing benefits and the other thing just doesn't really have a clear uh, benefit or disadvantage from that relationship. <clears throat> and then parasitism is where one thing benefits, the parasite, and then the other thing is very much harmed. But again, it's a long lasting relationship. It is not predator prey. It involves that one thing ends up actually uh, getting benefited from it and the other thing ends up getting hurt over a long period of time. So let's take a look at this video, which is an example of mutualism, where it's a relationship in which both species benefit. So here's the video. So now let's talk, what's the relationship between the ants and the caterpillar? So as you saw, the caterpillar basically got protection by uh, doing the thing it did with the pulsating food snack treat thing, yeah? And then as a result, the ants got a tasty treat and they end up being like the bodyguards for the caterpillar. So uh, ants end up getting food from it and then the caterpillar actually gets protection from it. So both species end up benefiting here. So that's why it's an example of mutualism because both end up having good come out of it. All right, let's take a look at the video for commensalism. And commensalism is when one organism benefits and the other remains relatively unaffected or impacted. So one benefits and the other just really does not care. 
Okay, so when you take a look at the relationship there, we have basically the red-faced macaques. They are uh, unaffected, right? They don't actually like need the deers in any way. They don't get any advantage from the deers, but the spotted deers get a huge advantage from the red-faced macaques. So what happens is that they end up getting a benefit of both the food source of all the leaves that end up on that floor, right? The forest floor. And then on top of that, they also get a warning system for tigers coming. Uh, so they get a ton of benefit, but they don't actually end up benefiting the macaques at all in this relationship. So macaques end up not being affected and the spotted deers have a benefit. So that's why it's commensalism. Okay. So if we were doing this on a test, you would explain to me how one thing benefits and the other thing is unaffected. And that's how we know what type of relationship it actually is. Now in parasitism, we have one organism that benefits called the parasite, and then the other one is harmed and that's the host. So the parasite ends up always being the one that benefits and often it's in like a host organism Okay, and then when we look at the host, it's harmed through that process. Now it has to be a long lasting relationship, but for example, if we take a look at something like a tapeworm, right, that tapeworm ends up taking nutrition away from the host over time, which is harming the host, but it lasts for a long period, the essentially the lifetime of the host. Now this video is a little bit weird in that you could almost say this is more of a predator-prey relationship because of how fast it is, but it's still fascinating and it has to do with a parasite living within insect hosts. So go ahead and watch this video. So relationship between the bullet ants and the cordyceps, the fungi. Uh, basically what's happening here is that the fungi ends up benefiting because it uses it to get high up and then spread its spores in order to find more hosts. So by actually being a parasite for the ants, it ends up being able to infect more ants as a result. So it has a huge benefit of being able to spread further and more effectively. Okay, well, obviously the ant is very much harmed and in this case killed throughout this process. And the fact that it's killed relatively quickly is why I said that this might not fit cleanly into parasitism, but it's still just such a cool video and such a creepy video that we had to use it in this lesson. Okay, so a few more things to go through. Let's look at a few more examples and you tell me what type of symbiotic relationship this is. So here's a video of a buffalo and ox peckers. Tell me what type of symbiosis you think this is. And the answer is, of course, it's mutualism. And the explanation is the ox pecker is covered with ticks and various other insects that the egrets eat, cleaning the buffalo and preventing disease. Okay, so both are benefiting here. We have the birds basically getting like free meals, a place to find food, and then the ox being protected from ticks that could otherwise cause infection and discomfort and so on. I mean, honestly, a tick uh, could end up causing like something that would kill it with infection. So definitely a huge benefit. Here's another really weird one. Oh, definitely check this one out. So this is parasitism. The parasite uses the snail to attract uh, a predator, a bird, sorry, that will then allow the parasite to reproduce and then continue and spread throughout the forest infecting more snails. So again, kind of like that fungi in the previous video, this is a way for it to spread to new hosts, right? To continue the cycle going on, but such a weird video, okay. So at the end of the day, here's the, the final like encompassing thing that symbiosis is a long lasting ecological relationship that benefits at least one organism of two different species that live in close contact. We have the three types, parasitism, okay, where there's one that benefits and one that gets harmed, commensalism where one benefits and the other doesn't care, isn't affected, and mutualism where both benefits. All right, that's it. Have a good rest of your day.